To download our latest video podcast or learn more about NASA EDGE, just visit our website at www.nasa.gov slash NASA EDGE. From there, go to the archive page to view our entire collection of video podcasts. You can also find NASA EDGE on iTunes. Just visit the music store, type NASA EDGE in the search window to visit our page. From there, you can download the vodcast, subscribe for free, and even tell your friends on Facebook and Twitter. So download NASA EDGE today. And get an inside and outside look at all things NASA. Let's see if Steel Hill will support the co-host as we take a look at three cool space weather satellites. Unfortunately, we won't be talking to Steel's twin brother, Aluminum. It's be scary. careful, folks. This is, this is scary. <laughs> He does that all the time. <laughs> this is actually Camilla's cousin. We don't have a name for uh, Camilla's cousin yet. But Camilla, who looks just like this, is the official mascot for SDO, or the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And what is really cool about this spacecraft and its uh, instruments is we're going to see the sun in super HD for the first time. We're talking 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, which is about 10 times your average HD TV. So the level of detail will be just phenomenal. So besides seeing the full sun with, at, at that size, we can zoom in on a real small area where there might be a sunspot or a prominence or some solar activity and still have really crisp detail. So much better, four times better than SOHO and twice, which is an, another solar mission, and twice the resolution of STEREO, which is a more recent solar mission. Now, to, wow. I'm a little concerned about this because, uh, so I'm thinking about it, it's Sun Earth Day, obviously, and we're celebrating it, and uh, the sun's kind of a star, right? It is. But SDO is coming off like a really intense paparazzi-type situation with all these photographs. <laughs> I mean, you're like the TMZ uh, 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 for the sun. That's right. Now, we're going to send back, I don't know what it means anything, but 1.5 terabytes a day. But let me get, tell you what that represents. That means a picture every second or so of the sun at 16 megabytes per picture. So you do the math. I don't know how many. No, don't ask me to do the math. <laughs> it amounts to about a half a million uh, iTunes a day. Now, you mentioned Stereo, which was another satellite. Actually, it's two satellites up there, right? That's right. What's really cool about Stereo is this 3D look of the sun because we have one ahead of Earth, one behind the Earth, pretty much on the Earth orbit, and they can see the sun from two perspectives. For a while, we could, they take actual 3D images of sun, and they're on the, on the stereo website. Now they're too far apart, but what's really cool is they're so far apart that we're seeing more and more of the sun. This one sees around the corner, so to speak. The other one sees around the corner. And in about a year, they'll be exactly opposed to each other, so we'll see the whole sun for the very first time with sort of our space weather warning system. We do tell satellite operators that, hey, we think there is a solar storm, we saw it uh, happen, we think it'll get here in about, let's say, a day and a half, sometimes two, sometimes three, and uh, sometimes they take uh, precautionary measures. So yeah, we're, we're sort of in that mode where we can at least provide some early warning system. Well, we're gonna go to a break, and when we come back, it's gonna be your turn to ask questions yes. to the subject matter experts, and uh, we'll be right back. You're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. Let's wrap up the best of any live with a live Q&A session, Sun Earth Day 2010. Don't forget your Kleenex. Or your hand sanitizer. When the, the solar storm arrived at the Earth, it, it hit us very hard. We had absolutely fabulous aurora. But um, if, you, if you see an aurora in the sky, you have a current system flowing. That's what you do. You have particles flowing around, and that gives you a current. And when those currents are up there, they, they can interfere with currents down on Earth. They need to find somewhere to close. So they have to find something really good to close through. And let's see, a power grid. They've, got, they've even got the wires there, just, just conveniently there for them. So the currents flow through the wires of the power grid. Normally the electricity that comes into your home is an AC current. This is a big, dirty, great DC current. Comes down, smacks through the whole thing, causes wow. fires, all kinds of things, hot spots in transformers. Um, yeah, it really did do a lot of damage. So we have another question uh, asking, you know, this, the astronauts are on, on station, on the ISS, International Space Station. Are they protected from the solar storms? Um, yes, uh, they, they have. The, obviously, if you know a solar storm is coming, you don't want to have an astronaut outside um, the space station. So they go inside, and there are areas that are particularly well shielded, um, extra hand sanitizer, um, to keep keep the radiation away from extra them. Extra bottle. Extra bottle. Um, but yeah, that it's very, very thick shielding, and it, they go inside, and they avoid going outside until the radiation's gone down. Yeah. And, it, and it brings We make up, sure that we tell them when that's uh, we think that's coming. But still, it brings up a, a good point. You know, uh, as we adventure beyond low Earth orbit, you know, 
know, let's say 10, 20, 30 years down the road, let's say we go to Mars one day. Yeah. I mean, solar storms are going to be a huge part of uh, protect. We have to protect those astronauts as they venture off to, to Mars. Very much so. That's a it's a concern of NASA. That's just one reason why we have a lot of solar study missions, and uh, a very. Uh, Smart people are working on shielding for astronauts for that kind of a trip. We'll have a solution in time. Hey, we have a question from Franklin uh, from the internet. Franklin? The question came in is how powerful is the typical solar flare? Is there, is there a typical solar flare? Oh, a good, if, if you wanted to know the amount of radiation coming from a solar flare, uh, yeah, um, then if, if it took about two and a half, three minutes to boil a cup of water in your microwave, um, if you had a solar flare, you'd boil the Great Lakes in seconds. Well, like can, can you repeat that one more time? I certainly can. If it takes two and a half to three minutes to boil a cup of water in your microwave, you would boil away the Great Lakes in just a few seconds. Wow. That's pretty You powerful. don't mess with the solar flare. No. Now, before we end the, uh, the live show, uh, uh, you ever watch American Idol? Sure. Okay, you know the judges that are on American Idol? So we want you to be, some, to be the judges here. We have a little video clip we want to share with you. And as you know, Elaine and Troy, uh, they have the, uh, the Space Weather Action Center reports okay. uh, that they provide. And they do a great job. And we get to see uh, videos from the kids delivering Space Weather Action Center reports. The co-host has developed one. And I want you to actually judge his performance. Minimal magnetospherence. You'll probably drop a call here and there, maybe from an in-law. You think about your SPF uh, with the intensity, you probably can subtract five from your sunscreen rating. Uh, pretty manageable stuff. Next picture. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. What up, B-Dog? You did your thing. <laughs> <laughs> and in the words of Paula, good for you. Uh, there you go, Steele, what do you think? Uh, I gotta give him his props. He, he really did a lot of original things there. Uh, anybody that can, can think of magnetosphere and so uh, deserves another chance to come back. I so this yeah. is kind of clarified on the content. Is there such a thing as a class five CME? It depends what what scale you're on, but I, I think there could be, yes. Could I, be? I think that looked good for yeah. a class five CME. Yes. We'll buy I, that. Yeah, I did want to say he did blatantly use magnetos magnetospherence without the use of a Kleenex, and that was a little worrying. A little worried. Okay. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, Nikki, Steele, uh, Holly, Troy, and Elaine. And for all of you out there watching today, thank you for coming on. This is Sun Earth Day 2010. Hey, watch NASA Edge, an inside and outside look at all things NASA. <laughs>